continuation we are now this is now our first uh, example problems for earthquake load analysis under earthquake load analysis this is an example problem on earthquake load analysis In this example problem we are now asked to determine the earthquake load that will then be distributed throughout this given structure of a given structure below along x and y axis we have now to identify the lateral forces due to an earthquake at a specific importance factor and a specific zoning locations given yung ating front and back section as well as the side elevation of our structure there are tying four floors ground floor second third fourth and a roof deck so each floor has a height of three meters and the depth of the foundation from the ground floor is 1.5 meters so we need now to identify the force or the lateral force on the roof deck fourth floor third floor second floor and ground floor dimensions are given then on dying six by eight as six meters in eight as six meters and eight meters and project location now very important ito is now the auto hand building slu baguio city now this is how it look like for our floor framing plan for our floor framing plan meron tayong five columns uh, vertically and uh, three columns horizontally dimensions six and eight meters spacing ng beams horizontally is seven meters at four four at seven meters so that is equivalent to four times seven twenty eight uh, meters ba? yeah twenty eight meters okay now first things first is for us to identify your tributary area your tributary area of a section or your tributary width so for us para madali yung ating design kunin natin yung critical section or yung critical floor or floor that most likely will carry more loads then kung ano man yung nasolve natin yun yun na rin yung gagamitin natin sa third floor second floor fourth floor and the succeeding floors throughout the structure para maximum loads tayo okay with that said on the front and back section this is how are we going to identify the tributary width uh, with respect to elevation so ito yung ating tributary width tributary width of a floor area or a floor section should be half of the above section or above floor and half of the lower floor so if each floor has three meters uh, height so that is now equal also half half 1.5 1.5 so 3 meters same goes to the side section so that is also 3 meters okay so ito yung ating based on elevation now how about based on the floor framing plan Based on the floor framing plan, there are two ways in which we can identify the tributary width. First up is laterally. Ito yung ating tributary width, laterally. Kunin natin yung kalahate sa floor section na to, and yung kalahate sa floor section na yan. So, ano yung kalahate ng 6 at kalahate ng 8? We have 3 and 4 meters. So, we have a tributary width on this section, horizontally, of 7 meters. Then the rest of the floor free, uh, floor section will be <coughs> tributary width on the corridor. Okay. Ibig sabihin ng tributary width is the specified loads on a floor system. So kung ano yung tributary width sa area na to, on the area na yan, lahat ng loads sa area na yan ay translate natin through the floor slab, beams, columns, and all structural parameters of our structure. So, lahat na makukompute natin sa area na yan, yun yung magiging load sa area din na yan. Same goes sa corridor at dito rin sa corridor. Ayan. Half, that is 3 meters, and also half of this will be 4 meters. Kaya yung tributary with the section na yan is 7 meters. Then, vertically, ito naman per uh, vertical section. So, per vertical section, ito yung kanyang tributary width. Meron tayong distance na 7 meters per section. Kung half yan, 3.5, half din ito. Ibig sabihin, ito ay 7 
meters. Based on the corridor, ito yung ating floor loads or tributary width. That is also 3.5 meters. Okay? So, meron na tayong tributary area of a section. First thing is for us to identify <coughs> the section at which we can then design the total loads. Assume natin, nagagamitin natin si center columns. Okay? Gamitin daw natin si center columns. Lahat ng nasa gitna ng floor system na yan, lahat ng nasa gitna ng section or tributary area sa floor section na yan, kailangan natin compute yung load based on the design conditions. Okay? First, on our design procedure, design procedure is to identify or to check the occupancy. Anong category ito? Para saan yung ating facility? Para saan yung ating structure? So, note that the project location is at Otohan Building, SLU Baguio City. So, it is a school building. If it is a school building, it is now under essential facility. If it is an essential facility, essential facilities. Essential facilities, note that it is now a school building. School building. Saan natin makikita yan? That is now identified at table uh, 103-1 of our NSCP. Page 1-6 of chapter 1, section 103. Diyan nyo yan makikita. So, it is a school building essential facility. Part 2, we need now to identify the importance factor of this structure. Ayan. Importance factor. Sabi ko nga kanina from our uh, previous lectures, importance factor designate how essential, how important is the safety of this structure. So, importance factor. Importance factor. Note that we have categorized the occupancy as an essential facility. School building. So, Based on our table, saan makikita yung importance factor table that is now identified at table 208-1. Page 2-185, chapter 2, section 208 of NSCP. So, if it is an essential facility, a school building, therefore, the importance factor is now 1.5 or IP value is equivalent to 1.5. So, meron na tayong importance factor. Next on our uh, design condition is the soil profile type. Anong klaseng soil yung nandoon sa project location? Soil profile types. So, soil profile types are now identified at table uh, 208 dash 2 page 2 dash 186 chapter 2 chapter 2 section 208 of our NSCP okay so let's assume that the soil profile on the project location is identified as a stiff soil uh, profile stiff soil profile Kikita nyo yan sa table. Stiff soil profile. SD. Tabi natin yung SD. Kailangan natin yan. Next stop is for us. Uh, D. Is for us to categorize the location. Which is your seismic zoning. Sa seismic zone, saan nakikita yung location natin? Ay, yung project location natin. So, Baguio City. Most of the entire part of the country, Philippine, um, uh, Luzon, besides in Mindanao, is at zone 4 while the Palawan region as well as the Hulusul region are now at zone 2 so Baguio City is located at zone 4 with a Z value of 0.4 saan makikita yung Z value na 0.4 Z value na 0.4 is found at table um, uh, 208 
dash three, page two dash one eighty eight, chapter two, section two o eight point four point four point one. Okay, jaan yung ating zoning point four c z. Now next stop is for us to identify our near source factor n a and n v. Near source factor. Near source factor n a. Near source factor n a is your seismic source value, which is now identified at the table. 208-4 page 2-188 chapter 2 of section 208.4.4.1 so nandyan yung ating table so NA let's categorize the location as a type A or seismic type seismic source seismic source type A. So if it is a seismic source type A, it is now a high plate of seismic activity. High plate seismic activity. If it is a high plate seismic activity, probably uh, magnitude of the uh, earthquake will be between uh, 7 and 8.4 magnitude. Ito yung nasa table natin. Which is now under table 208-4. Categorized as less than or equal to 2 km. Si, uh, type A is less than or equal to 2 km. Page 2-207 of chapter 2. Section 208.4.4.3. So, NA, type A, near source factor, less than 2 kilometer, less than or equal to 2 kilometer has a value of 1.5. Based din sa importance factor na 1.5. So, tabi natin yan, ito yung ating NA. Then, we have the near source factor NV. For the near source factor NV, Near source factor NV, parehas lang. NV type A, less than or equal to 2 km. The value is now equal to 2.00. So, 2.00 is now located at table 208-6. Okay? 208-6, page Chapter 2, 208, page 208, chapter 2, section 208.4.4.3. Okay? Yan yung ating near source factor for NV. So, NV has a value of 2. <coughs> Next stop is for us to identify the seismic coefficient CA and CV. Take note of this. If the project location is located at zone 2, diretso na tayo sa seismic coefficient. Di na natin kailangang isolve yung near source factor. But if the location or the project location is now at zone 4, we still need to identify the near source factor NA and NV. Pero pag zone 2, diretso na tayo sa seismic coefficient CA and CV. For the seismic coefficient, CA. Seismic coefficient CA is based on table 208-7, page 2-207, chapter 2, section 208, point 4, point 4, and point 4. Check ninyo dun sa table, nasaan si uh, stiff soil. 
stiff soil profile remember that our soil profile is identified as a stiff soil SD located at zone 4 of 0.4 na value importance factor is 1.5 so hanapin sa CA CA stiff soil zone 4 ano yon? that is 0.44 NA identified the NA base kanina of 1.5 Substitute NA is now equal to 0.66. Next stop is our seismic coefficient CV. So seismic coefficient CV. Seismic coefficient CV is now located at table 208-8. Same page as CA of 2-207 chapter 2 section 204.4.4.3 so with that note we have zone 4.4 importance factor 1.5 stiff soil profile SD so hanapin si stiff soil profile SD under zone 4 we have CV of um, uh, 0.4 uh, 0.64 NV we have computed NV as equal, uh, identified NV as equal to 2.00. Substitute lang natin, 0.64 NV times 2. So CV is now equal to 1.28. Unitless. So tabi natin yung value na yan. Next one will be your structural system coefficient R. For your structural system coefficient R, system coefficient R structural system coefficient R is now identified at table 208-11 A, B, and C that is table 208-11 A, B, and C page 2-223 of chapter 2, section 208. Now, take note of this. Anong classing structure yung itatayo natin? Steel ba siya? Timber ba siya? Reinforced concrete ba siya? Anong classing system? Meron ba siyang shear wall? And so forth and so long. So, with this, let us just assume that the structure is a dual system. Dual system. Dual systems special reinforced concrete special reinforced concrete uh, as a fun fact on this one on the fourth floor makikita ninyo yung malapit dun sa generator yun ay isang shear wall okay <coughs> yung faculty room na malapit dun sa generator that is categorized as a shear wall so basically that is a dual system special reinforced concrete using table label 208 11a 11a basically 11a lang yun we have dual system special reinforced concrete so r or structural system coefficient r should now be equal to 8.5 tabi na lang natin yan and those are the values that we'll be using later on to compute the base shear of our structure now, with that note, start tayo with the base shear of structure. Computing the base shear. Provision and computations of a base shear is based on section 208.9 of NSCP starting on page 2-231, chapter 2. So, andun lahat ng provision natin and identifying the base shear of a structure and the lateral forces and as well as the uh, computation or derivation of lateral forces uh, from foundation to the roof deck of the structure. First, for us to do so is for us to compute first our seismic loads. Ano yung mga seismic loads natin? Nandiyan yung ating dead loads, nandiyan yung ating live loads. As a continuation on this lecture, we'll be starting on computing or identifying or uh, assigning the different loads that we're going to use on our structure first thing on that is your seismic 
dead weight. Seismic dead weight. Seismic dead weights. Those are your walls, concrete walls, slabs, floor finish, beams, columns, and ceilings. Lahat ng loads na yon, density and whatsoever, ay nasa chapter 2 ng ating NCP. Like what we have discussed from uh, module 1, unit 1, and unit 2. Uh, module 1, Unit 1, and Module 2, Unit 1. Okay? Structural uh, load analysis and fundamentals of structure. So, I'll see you on the next lecture video for the computation of uh, base shear and load specifications. Bye-bye.